Good morning, planetary kin, and welcome to Time Shift 2020. My name is Vasumi. I'm Kin 71, Blue Rhythmic Monkey, here to organize the physical reality in order to play with magic, um, so that that magic becomes the tool to becomes a doorway from one world to another, born in the World Bridger Wave Spell. The World Bridger is simply that, bridging from one world to another. The main world that I've focused on in my life, bridging, is from the mainstream disharmonic matrix foundation to a more harmonic foundation based in the 13 moon calendar and the codes of the Zolkin of the Mayan dream spell and the advanced practices. So I've spent the last 23 years tracking those codes and sharing them, teaching them, sharing them in theatre. Um, I love to share them in theatre. That's such a wonderful way to put each uh, galactic signature, each of the 20 seals, by decoding people and, and putting them in the placement of the seals, the yellow sun, the red dragon, the white wind, etc., around the 20, and then experimenting and looking at what is that and does is that real, does that reflect, and giving community an opportunity to reflect and see if there's a reality to the codes. And um, so I've done that quite a few times in different communities, in Byron Bay, in Bali, in New Zealand. And uh, it's always um, such a wonderful experiment. And of course, it's a play. And being a blue rhythmic monkey, I love to play. So that's a wonderful way to share the codes and um, to activate a whole community. So that's uh, fun. And fun is great for me. Okay, so I guess first off I'd like to give thanks to the organizers of this Time Shift 2020. Um, it's an amazing opportunity for us all to share and to view each other and to share our work with the wider planet, with the people, wider humanity, whoever may be tuning in to listen. And um, so I give great thanks to those people, to the people that tirelessly have been um, um, uh, translating and putting it all together, yeah, and on all kin everywhere. Thank you. I'd also like to give great thanks to Jose Aguayas Valumvotan for being the initiator of the codes and bringing the codes to us. Um, they were um, sealed for 1260 years in Palenque in the Temple of Inscriptions. And um, Jose Valumvotan was the bringer of those codes out into the world for us all to explore. And um, um, at the perfect timing, of course. So I'm um, sure someone else may have talked about Palenque and the codes, and so I will not dove, dive too deeply into that and just allow um, just a touching on those things. Yes. Um, I'd also love to give thanks to Lloydine Arguez, the, the feminine counterpart of Jose at the time of bringing the codes through for anchoring and being that feminine nurturing um, um, energy that also supported bringing these codes through. It is the time of the feminine and um, big thanks to Lloydine who has now passed and, and Jose who has now passed also. And in this time of the feminine, we've gone from a masculine um, leadership model, which is um, um, the top triangle of the Merkaba, which is the masculine and feminine. Um, so that model, and, and we are now embracing the beginning of the model of the feminine, where the, the leader... Um, which is maybe more the mother that is at the root, that holds space and shares love. Yeah. And we're going to dive into the feminine and what that means um, for us at this time, as we've just entered a 13-year cycle of the feminine. 
So we're going to explore the codes of the feminine, the white codes, because last year on July 26, which is the day when Sirius rises with the sun, the heliacal rising of Sirius, which denotes the beginning of the 13 moon calendar year, July 26. So that's the 365 day solar calendar, so at the beginning of our year, July 26. January 1st, we don't really go with, it has no um, cosmic reference. It's just a um, man-made overlay into um, meaningless reality. So um, this is one of the points of the 13 moon calendar in the dream spell is that there is a deep meaning in all the codes. Um, in the Gregorian calendar, the man-made calendar of, of disharmonic measure, um, the, it lacks meaning. And really, when we look at our world, that's reflected in the world. It's lacking meaning. Whereas in the 13 moon calendar and the codes of the Zolkin, there is infinite meaning. There is infinite um, information to relate to, and um, but not not in a um, in a very potent way, in a way that really reflects our journey, that has resonance for each being, and that is why more and more people are following the codes as they seek for meaning, and the codes reveal the evolutionary cycle, they re reveal the synchronicity, they reveal why we are here, they, um, yeah, it's pretty infinite actually to even try and, and, and um, explain that um, it falls short because it is an infinite um, synchronic order, the order of synchronicity, consciousness is forever evolving and so it's the evolution of consciousness that we are tracking with these codes. So we look for meaning primarily for ourselves and then as we fill our own cup with why we are here, that starts to um, bring our awareness out and find um, infinite layers or infinite multi-dimensional layers of meaning and this is this is the draw card um, of the codes it's profound simply simply profound so speaking about the feminine triangle I'd also like to honor Stephanie South the Red Queen the the um, our um, the mother of our lineage. So this bottom triangle, the one that is at the root, that holds space and encouragement and shares love and um, uh, acceptance of the kin across the planet. So she is our, at, she has carried the baton on from Jose and Loidine and is now our lineage carrier and um, and is an ex exemplary an exemplary example of what it is to be that being holding that space for the kin on the planet. So thank you to Stephanie, um, dear sister. Yeah, words are not enough. So just sending that pulse of love to you. Okay. So in the ways of the feminine, so last July 26, we entered a 13-year cycle that began with white magnetic wizard. So within the 20 seals, the 20 archetypes, the 20 universal truths, the 20 that relates with our 20 fingers and toes, there are five white energies. So, so, um, so the 20 is a re red color, a white color, a blue color, and a yellow color, and that times five. So the red is fire, it initiates. The white is refined, it, it, um, it's feminine in nature. The blue transforms and brings change, and the yellow projects and creates and is masculine in nature. 
So last July 26, the planet, the Earth, with Sirius rising with the sun, Sirius being the brightest star in the sky, three times the size of the sun, 300 times more bright and reflective than diamond, reflecting the cosmos. The Sirius, Sirius is the place, this is, the whole calendar is a Syrian transmission. So that wisdom that is born from Sirius A and Sirius B and, and it takes 52 years for those two to spiral around each other and, and the Zolkin reveals a 52 year cycle. So every year, um, so we are born with a particular signature, <clears throat> one of the 13 tones and one of the 20 glyphs. So the 13 being the 13 major joints in the body, I'm sure people have spoken to that. So that's two ankles, two knees, two hips, two wrists, these two, these two, and this 13th major joint. Um, so 13 major joints, 20 fingers and toes, 13 times 20 being 260 days from conception to birth. So it's a gestation cycle amongst many, many other things. That's the Zolkin. And so each person, when we're born, we're born on a day. Each day has one of the 13 tones and one of the 20 glyphs. So we call that our galactic signature. So rhythmic is the sixth tone of 13 and monkey is the 11th glyph of 20. So last year on July 26 was magnetic, which is the first tone of the 13 and the wizard, which is the 14th glyph of the 20 glyphs. So that's just the structure. So what does it mean? And that's where we get into the juice of this. So magnetic is like a magnet, you know, like it's the first day of a 13 day cycle. So a magnet attracts the consciousness. It attracts the consciousness that will set the purpose for that whole 13 day cycle. And that consciousness is revealed in which of the 20 glyphs is, is operating on that day. So it was wizard. And white wizard is the 14th universal truth. It comes straight after the Skywalker. The Skywalker is the 13th universal truth. So be aware, um, 13 became very unlucky, probably through the church. And uh, probably because 13 is about expansion, awakening, um, exploration of the cosmos, expression. Um, it's the explorer. Um, and so that's the 13th universal truth. So from that expansion, that awakening comes the wizard. And the wizard anchors. is very shamanic. It's very receptive. And it's anchoring down all that has been explored. So each of the <clears throat> 20 universal truths or glyphs or or seals leads from one to the other in the evolutionary cycle. So from that expansion comes the anchoring down of the wizard, the receptive, recept receptivity. And the and and last year or or this year, because we're just about at the end of it, from July twenty sixth to July twenty fifth of the next year. Um, you know, I was wondering how on earth are we going to stop? How on earth are we going to become receptive? How on earth are we going to enter into this feminine cycle of 13 years? And um, then COVID-19 came. And the world stopped. Profound. I was in awe at, the, at, the, at this creation. That somehow, no matter what the ideas are about what it is and what it isn't and all of those things, on, on one level, the earth and humanity stopped. And there was a lot of time to process, to process many things that were not able to be processed when we're running around and round and round and round and, and um, um, progress at all costs. Um, which costs the earth a lot. So anyway, this stopping, this wonderful, wonderful stopping, um, and this is not to um, disregard the, the pain that many people suffered during this time, 
which is, you know, um, resultant from a disharmonic matrix, from a disharmonic system, following a disharmonic system where, um, where the abundance of our planet is not shared, where there are those that have and those that have not. And this is one of the blue night um, um, imbalances. So blue night is the is the um, is the abundance of our planet in the iron crystal core of our beloved Earth Mother is a dreaming or a contract for her, and her contract is abundance for all beings. So she's doing an impeccable, amazing job at um, you know creating abundance for all beings. But it's, it is humanity that is at fault here. Humanity is um, going into fear, and then there are those that have too much because they're so scared that there's not enough and so they have too much which makes an imbalance for those others that then don't have their share of what this wonderful mother of ours is providing for us so that's blue night and blue night is all about that dreaming that contract of abundance for all beings so just to honor and not disregard that imbalance that is occurring on our planet. But that is one of the primary reasons for us to share this work so that we may um, offer a solution of, of following the codes to understand the pure um, order of consciousness. How, what is the map? So here is the map. The Zolkin is the map for the evolving consciousness. And so that's um, what we offer here is that map because for me following it daily for 23 years I have found that it is the map, it is the holy grail, it reveals to me daily the evolution of consciousness so that I'm able to um, tune in and feel that. And it's not that I'm, that I'm following that map externally and doing what it says. I, it is reflecting my internal journey. It is, it is resonating deeply with what is naturally occurring in me and through me as we are all part of this whole um, cosmos. And the cosmos has a map. And so the daily tracking of the codes reveals that map to us. And it's, it's different that if the map would reveal something that is outside of me and I can't feel it. This is not what's happened. Over 23 years daily, I've been testing it to see if it's right, to see if it's wrong. I had a big awakening in India and so um, I kind of woke up to what's illusion and what is not on, on, on a lot of levels. And so I could feel and resonate inside my being that this is truth, this is reality, this is ever-evolving truth because truth, the nature of truth, is ever-evolving. So, uh, yeah, just to share my absolute awe at the codes. Profound. Amazing. So, Magnetic Wizard. So, that first year of the feminine cycle. So white, the white energies are feminine, they're receptive. Um, we'll go through the five white energies right now. So um, we have the wizard, which is receptive, um, anchoring, shamanic, present in the moment, in the now, the wizard. We have, um, and I'll start at the beginning because the wizard's number 14, it's the fourth of the five energies if we're starting at kin one the dragon so the wind is the um is the second energy of the 20 energies and the wind is like the hollow bamboo the wind is um that that comes through us in the temples of palenque all the windows um you know they're stone it's all stone so they're all shaped in the glyph the ancient glyph of the wind um, to show that that's where consciousness flows through, the wind flows through the buildings, through the wind, windows, windows, interesting, windows, cool, so there we go, even that word, right, so the wind, the hollow bamboo, that that comes through us, you could call it thine will, because it's equal and opposite is yellow human, 
um, which is my will, my, my choosing, my wisdom. But the wind is thine will, thine wisdom. That, that comes through us. And that can be seen through the musicians and the artists, um, the writers, the dancers, the, all that white wind energy that, that comes through us. Yeah. So the second of the white energies, so that's white wind, we have then white world bridger. And white world bridger I've spoken to a little bit. White world bridger is what it is to surrender, to let go. To let go, to let God or let consciousness or let uh, whatever you want to call the great creation. Um, to let, to let go and bridge from one world to another, to surrender. Another word for world bridger is death. It's a good day to die. So it's a good day to die. That uh, that can mean many things. It's it's not necessarily the death of the body. It can be the death of relationship. It can be the death of a project. It can be simply the letting go. How we see it often operating and what I see with myself as a world bridger, born in the world bridger cycle, so the purpose for me is world bridger, is the networker. It's like my capacity to move into one world um, and be accepted because I have no agenda, I'm just there and 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 to be friends, whatever, um, accepted because there's no threat. Um, and then no attachment, see you later, and then go into another world. These two worlds would never meet because of a very different ways of being. Um, but I'm again accepted there because I have no agenda and, and uh, um, world bridging, um, networking, relaxing, releasing is, is what naturally occurs. And so because they would never meet and then somebody says, oh, I'd love to know somebody that would do, 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 do. Like, oh, I have a friend, blah, 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 blah. And so it's the weaving of the worlds, um, the connecting of the worlds, the grandmother spider to weave the web of connection, the world bridger, to bridge the worlds. Also to hold space when, you know, death happens or marriage happens or birth happens, you know, to be a bridge, um, surrendered, no agenda. So that's the world bridger. It's another feminine releasing energy. So wind, world bridger, then we come to the white dog. And the white dog um, is the love. And so the white dog ha, um, has an urge to merge. So it's like looking into the blacks of another's eyes and just becoming one. Merging. Love. Yeah. And, and and that love and each one of the glyphs operates different can, when when it's related to each of the 13 tones. So we'll go into that in a moment. Um, so the white dog, the love, the loyalty, the, the capacity to um, dissolve boundaries. So that's the white dog, a dissolving energy. Yeah, beautiful. White dog goes to white wizard, which we've spoken about, which is to anchor down, shamanic, come into presence, be an energy anchor for all the cosmos, what's out there, <sighs> anchored. They're the kind of people when you're at a party and um, and um, maybe it's been a lot of energy and people are feeling a little bit like, Woo! and there's that white wizard sitting there and they end up with lots of people sitting around them because they feel really anchored with that person. So that's the the wizardly uh, shamanic energy. And then um, the last of the um, five white energies is the white mirror. And the white mirror reflects the truth. It cuts away what's not real. And it's, and it's interesting to, to work with the white mirror at this time because um, the year that we're coming into on July 26 is a number two in the 13 tones storm. And the number one of that cycle is the white mirror. And so the purpose of the year coming will be the mirror to reflect the truth, to reflect the truth and cut away what's not real. The mirror also has the sword, the sword which cuts through, cuts through and, and cuts away so that all of that energy that's held in untruth, in something that is not of a particular um, uh, never-ending pattern, um, becomes just the energy to play with. 
And so that'll be this coming year. There'll be a lot of cutting away of what's not real and that energy will um, be available on the physical plane to transform the cellular nature of the physical reality within us, this body, and without us in the physical realm. This blue lunar storm year will be guided by the monkey. And the monkey is to play. To play with that transformative. So there'll be a lot of energy to play with. And it also is a reminder to, to, um, to trust. To trust the transformation. Because transformation must happen. Um, it's 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 always happened and and it always will happen and it will be a time um, on our planet where we'll be going through a lot of physical change so um, to be as the child and to play and to trust that this is the natural occurring thing and the more that things are held in untruth then the more change the more will be cut away um, in order to bring that never-ending order of the hall of mirrors the reflecting the truth yeah so that's the year we are in and the year we're coming into and the last time that we had these particular years that we're in um, because it's a 52 year cycle so each date in the 13 moon calendar or the Gregorian calendar your birthday my birthday the beginning of the year will um, always be one of four energies on a particular date and these are called the earth families And the Earth family for July 26th, the beginning of the year, the magnetic moon one day of the 13 moon calendar, um, that particular Earth family is um, made up of the white wizard, the blue storm, the yellow seed and the red moon. So always on those days will be one of those four energies and they are the anchoring energies. They of the earth families, each earth family is five earth families of four um, relate to a certain um, place in the body or chakra. Um, so the top chakra is the yellow sun and it's equal and opposite the white dog and the red serpent and it's equal and opposite the blue eagle. So those four relate to the crown and those four energies sound the call, what we call sound the call. Um, yellow sun, white dog, white dog, love, loyalty, yellow sun, um, giving love to self so that one shines and radiates out the in deep end dance of the sun and the deep end dance of the dog. Yeah, and then the red serpent and the immediacy of the being in the now, super intense, learning about life from being right inside of it, and the eagle that pulls right back from life and... and and um, sees the bigger picture. So those four energies, <clears throat> those four energies make up the first of the um, earth families. The next is the, the throat chakra, um, and that's made up of the red dragon and its equal and opposite blue monkey. The red dragon births, initiates, um, nurtures the mother, the father. Um, the blue monkey is the child. It likes to push the boundaries and play with magic and trust and and um, do all those things um, and teach and teach through through the through the innocence of the child mind. Um, teach to push the boundaries in order to find things to explore things. Um, and, and the other two are the world bridger and the warrior. The world bridger to surrender, to let go. The warrior to hold on and, and um, stay with the mission. Um, so those four are the throat chakra. And these guys uh, transmit. And, um, and they're the teachers. They, they um, 
the sounding the call so there's something you know those guys have gone wow did you hear about da, 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 da. and these guys will know just enough about that in order to teach it and then you come to the height level and that is the blue hand and the red earth the blue hand is um, like the turtle in the hair so the blue hand is the hair and the red earth is the turtle so the blue hands going forward and accomplishing many things the red earth is going backwards and unraveling the evolutionary patterns in order to come present so they are equal and opposite and the other two is the white wind the hollow bamboo and the yellow human which is the yellow human is my will so thine will and my will and the wisdom of the ancestors that have come through our bloodlines etc etc yellow human the culture so those guys all go to the height and they, they mine the tunnels they go deeply into things they're the scientists amongst us um, these guys were establishing the genesis so they they teach the whatever it is and these guys then take that and mine it um, next you go to the solar plexus and this is the yellow star and the white mirror so the white mirror that reflects the truth and it's equal and opposite that um, is the artist that creates so from all that dross if there's dross there the mirror will strip it away the, the yellow star will lift it up and create with it um, it's all about harmony it doesn't look at the dross it just looks at it as energy to create with to co-create the harmony the beauty the art, the elegance. The other two is the Red Skywalker, which we've mentioned, the, the, the expansion, the exploration, the awakening, and the Blue Knight, which is in the collective unconscious dream time, in the dreaming um, that's held in the center of our earth, the dreaming of abundance for all beings. So those four operate in the solar plexus and they unravel the mystery. They unravel the mystery. They're the mysterious ones. The, in, the intuitive night, the, the truth reflecting mirror, the artist creative and the skywalker expansion, exploration. And then the last four are the ones that um, the wizard and it's equal and opposite the seed. So the wizard is like the great tree. You know, the wizard is like, you know, anchoring everything for, with its branches out there and it reaches out to the cosmos um, and, and all, and that's the Skywalker actually reaching out. And then the wizard is that all that that comes down, all that information those leaves have received from the cosmos, anchor all of that down into the roots and become very down and in present. And then the seed, it's like the gravity. The wizard is the gravity. And then the seed is the levity. The seed is that seed that's growing up from, comes straight after night. So the seed has all of that dreaming in it. And it grows up and up and up into the potential of, of the forest. It is not the forest, but it, it gathers all of that energy around from that deep under um, unconscious realm and, and, and lifts it up and, and um, grows into the potential. So seed people are often, you know, the center of attention. They, they gather all the information that they feel around them and they lift it to that potential of what is felt in the collective it's beautiful energy, vocalizing energy. So that's the wizard and the seed, the wizard, the anchoring down, the seed, the, the rising up, the levitation, um, the, the water that goes up the tree or the energy that goes up from the, from the roots. Yeah. And the other two in there is the storm, which we've talked about, which is the transformation of energy that's been cut away and then available for transformation. And then the red moon, which is hypersensitive and is doing that same thing, but very internally. It's purifying. The, it's like water that's cleansing and purifying. And red moon people are the most sensitive people you will meet. Often they may have a, a hard exterior because they're so sensitive you wouldn't pick it. But once you understand the codes, you can pick it quite easily that inside that hard exterior is this very sensitive being um, and not all moons will have the hard exterior it all depends what is their environment and what their work is so yeah that's the 20 glyphs we just got through that and and so of course those last four they anchor 
they ground the energy into the earth and they're the root chakra. So that's those guys. So just another word around the around the years we are in this feminine cycle. Um, this feminine cycle, you know, um, because it's a 52 year cycle, the Zolkin, the 260 days, and each one of us um, is on one earth family. So each year, each day of our birthday will only ever be one of those earth families. So I'm a blue monkey, so I will only ever have a birthday on a monkey day or a warrior day or a dragon day or a world bridge day. 26th of July will only ever happen on a wizard day or a seed day or a moon day or a storm day. So those are the earth families. Okay, so I'd like to conclude this offering with a meditation where we honor our beloved planet, um, our beloved earth. And um, so let's just close our eyes, go inside. Yeah, just feel, feel the inside of your being. Come back inside. And just feeling your heart. Taking a deep breath. And releasing into your body. And just as you release into your body, allow your energy to go down, to sink down and down through your body, down into the earth. And down deeper and deeper and deeper into the earth. Through the cord that is connecting you to the center of our earth being one of the Earth's children and feeling yourself <coughs> <coughs> and feeling yourself just relax and finding yourself in the center of the Earth one with the Earth feeling the mother feeling that grounding feeling that nurturing Feeling whatever it is you are feeling there in the center of the earth. I often like to envision it as a pool and I just dissolve into it and become one with that consciousness of our great Mother Gaia who holds abundance for all her children. And just feeling gratitude for that. Feeling gratitude for this great mother that we all live with and on and are part of. And then allowing yourself just to slip back up that cord and come back into this body and then but keep the journey going and head into the center of the sun and feel that cord where we are children of the Father as well. That bright light and find yourself going up that cord into the center of the sun and becoming one with that sun, with that bright orb of light. Hmm. And you can either choose to stay there or go further and we go into the Pleiades, into El Sion. And there is a point of light, a portal of light there. And this is the journey passageway through that point of light to even further again finding ourselves with Sirius traveling up, up, up to Sirius, becoming one, feeling into that heightened energy, that heightened light source where these teachings come from and finding yourself one with Sirius. And just resting there a moment to imbibe these um, frequencies of light, this holy grail of wisdom that comes there in Sirius. And once you're ready, come back down through Alcyon through our sun, bringing all that 
divine light and wisdom with you and down into the center of your own body in your heart center and imagine that heart center is the center of the earth and you are the earth, a one being and all that light that you've received allow that to become a piercing point of light sending rays, colorful rays of rainbow light up and down through the center of your heart and the center of the earth heading for the poles of your body, of the earth's body, emitting a rainbow energy out from each of the poles and creating a circumference, a donut shape of rainbow light around our earth with the earth spinning in the center of these two arcs of rainbow from one pole to the other out, extending out from the earth and just see ourselves as part of this spinning rainbow planet, this divine earth of rainbow light, signifying the awakening of the humanity, of the consciousness that is us, is around us, and is in all things. And blessed be, blessed be to this divine vision, this divine reality, this divine mm -hmm. moment of feeling the reality of this rainbow bridge. If we release anything that says we can't, we can create this and it has been an oftenly occurring thing when the kin get together in uh, at different events where the rainbows become very, very strong as we all do these meditations. So welcome to the Rainbow Bridge. Welcome to the Rainbow Bridge. Now open our eyes. And thank you for being with me and thank you for being on this journey and having the capacity mm -hmm. to receive these um, offerings through Time Shift 2020 and thank you to all the organizers of Time Shift 2020 for encouraging us all to to um, give these offerings all together at the end of this first year of the feminine cycle and the beginning of the next year, the second year of the 13 year cycle. So blessed be in Lakesh, I am another yourself and uh, may you go forth and multiply in Lakesh. <laughs>